this, th let me tell you where this thing, where this program comes from. This program is called Peak Performance On Demand. Uh, this was an original, an original uh, a seminar that was taught to some the, the great athletes, mostly tennis, international champion athletes, mostly tennis stars. Three PhDs and three sports psychologists put together a mental toughness cl clinic and camp, and it went on for several weeks for the great tennis stars of the world. And they, uh, and it was all based on mental toughness. They had a philosophy that anybody could get you physically ready to go to war, but the mind is where the real victories come from, is can you really win in the mind, because all the international great athletes are all great athletes. They're great tennis stars. So the difference between a, a real champion, the first place and second place, is microseconds in a race, etc. So they, they were really working hard on how do, you get, how do you get a person who's in athletics, especially tennis, to reach their peak performance when the moment comes they need it. And so they, uh, they had a camp. And the people would come there and spend several weeks at this particular camp. Franklin, when I was at, at Franklin, we heard about this camp. We went to Jacksonville because we talked about buying this particular seminar system. We never did buy it, but I went to Jacksonville several times and witnessed it and saw it, and it's great stuff. It really is great stuff. I'll tell you a little bit, a little bit more about it. One day, and I'm making this up because I don't know how it happened, but one day those three guys were having breakfast together when they said to themselves, I wonder if what we teach would work with real people people that aren't just tennis stars and that great athletes. I, w I wonder if other people in life would benefit as much by what we teach as would our high class and international champion athletes. And so they began a test to see if it did. They'd put together, brought people together in seminar fashion and began to teach peak performance on demand to all people and found out that everybody suffers under the same problem. Everybody wants to perform, most of us chicken out or, or, or uh, choke long before we get to the championship stage. And so they said, we need to train people how they can get prepared when that moment comes, when they're going to ask the girl to marry them, they're going to ask for the right job, they're going to do something else in life that's going to have a peak performance opportunity, how will they get to that point and not choke? My greatest analogy that I watched of that is when I watched the Utah Jazz one time a few years ago when they came the closest they'd ever come to being in the finals. They got up to the next, the second, last round. Of course, they had to play who? The Chicago Bulls. Guess who played with the Chicago Bulls? The, my, the Dennis Robin and, and Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan, of course, was the was the nemesis, and I remember watching that game. I was on TV, and I watched the game, and I, in this this one particular game, maybe it was, wasn't the same with the last one, but it was close. But I remember they had the the shot on Michael Jordan pulling up to the United Center in Chicago. Remember this? You might have seen this, and he he pulled up in his Maserati or whatever he pulled up in, and he and he got out of the car and opened the door, and he put his put his jacket over his shoulder, you know, and all the photos of the whole world, every camera in the world watching Michael Jordan slander into the United Center to go get dressed and ready to play the Utah Jazz in, this, I think, the sixth game. Had we won that game, would it, you know, it was a deciding game, whatever. And I remember watching him go in there. And then, of course, the game begins, and, and it's close and tight, and John Stockton and Carl Malone do their things, you know, and they've, they've beaten these guys several times, and this game tonight's it win tonight and they got the marbles are going to the finals and uh it was the final wasn't it? it was the final wasn't it? it was the finals it was the finals that's right that's right it was the finals they had been they had been the champions and of course michael jordan the hundred million dollar man when it came time for that moment of you know why does michael jordan get a hundred million bucks a year you know because in clutches, they need Michael Jordan, okay? Michael Jordan comes out and does his thing. And when it got right down to the wire, we could not beat that guy. 
he just put it, turned it on the last few minutes and, and put on his show that he does for everybody and put on a peak performance. And no matter how hard the other brethren tried, and, and tried they did, they could not conquer that little one-man show that just would not let them win. And Michael Jordan wins, and Utah Jazz takes second and have never come close since. I mean, that close. Anyway, that's a picture of a peak performance on demand. I just wanted to show that to you because guess who's on the top of that podium? Grandson. <laughs> it's my grandson. <laughs> he, he just took first place in whatever wrestling championship he's in, so I just thought that would give a kind of a visual to demonstrate to you what we're going to talk about today. Let's go to that next slide. This slide gives the whole premise for their, for their seminar. This seminar is a three-day seminar, $2,000 to get it. Again, you got in for half price today. But this is the whole basis of this seminar. The fact is that they found if they could get their players and then their housewives and then their firemen and then whoever else they had in mind when they started doing this for everyone, they found that they could, if they could get their players up to an ideal performance state, everybody has stress. Everybody operates under stress. We all have stressful moments. We all have times when we get under great pressure. The difference between Michael Jordan and the rest of the world in the basketball world is that Michael Jordan found out he could handle more stress and take more pressure than his competition did. He didn't choke as soon as his competitors choked. And as a consequence, he could outlast them. And they said, can we teach people to take the stresses of life, recognize that they all have it, and the better we get their performance state, the more often they will not choke when the opportunities come. Most of us are in an average or a poor performance state, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, whatever it might be, and as we are, then when the stress passes our threshold, when the stress level passes where we are able to handle it, then we stop, we choke, we fold up, we quit. We say, I don't want to compete anymore. I don't want to run anymore. I don't want to be in that race. I, I can't, I'm not going to compete for that job. Why? Because it's too, more than I can handle. And so what their whole thesis was, they said, let's raise the standard of your performance state so that when you get the opportunity, you'll have a higher threshold of stopping than will your competitor. Does that make sense? And then, of course, every time we have stress, what is, happens when the, when the basketball game ends? You know, he, he goes out and you watch him play golf and you watch him go sleep and they go eat and do all kinds of things. We have to learn how to recover as well. You can't operate under great stress forever. And, of course, what do we do? When we're at La EA, what do we do? When we want to alleviate the stress. Go at the beach, you know. Live at the beach. And that's, that's where half of us live our lives is at the beach. Why? Because we have to recover. Now, the fact is that most of you, by the way, don't need to recover 18 hours a day, okay? You don't need to be at the beach the rest of your life, okay? Just because you had one bad class. So, so that's going to be the whole premise today. We're going to talk about how do we do that and, and what areas. And, when you, and now, let's go to the next slide for a minute, Dustin. And you'll, you'll, well, the three things they promised in Jacksonville, that if, if you can produce a peak performance on demand, you'll have higher productivity, better health, and more happiness. What does that remind you of? What formula does that remind you of? We had the second week. The triquasion, which was? Self-esteem equals productivity equals event control. And, and when we promised you that if you take control of your life, I hope all of you are doing that now better than you were, as you take control of your life, your, your production and your self-esteem goes up. These guys promise the same thing. As you get, your, as you get your, your performance state up here, so you're prepared for those moments. You only have a few moments in life when it really counts. You, you only got a few moments. You, you think about it. I, I can think in my own life of moments that I really had to perform if I, if I performed at my very peak in those few moments in time, I got things in life that I never would have had before. And so the real peak performance moments only come once in a while. And, and, and you know, usually, guys, that's when you get the girl. 
that moment when you got to perform at that moment, if you can't do it, if you don't measure up, if you're not there, she says no, and vice versa. And, and, and so, so the whole object is to figure out how we, how we get us prepared for those moments in life when we're going to play the Utah Jazz for the championship. And can we be prepared for it? Okay. Now, this, this, is the, this is the model, the peak performance. And I've added several things. The, the Jacksonville model did not have all of these on it. I've added several because this is a Mormon group, and I usually present it to a Mormon crowd. And so I'm, I'm, just, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on some of these because some we've already had a whole session on, and others you're going to have a session on before we're through, and I'll announce which ones they are, which we won't spend any time on. But I just, I just, you want to see the whole gamut of at least, what is that, 3, 5, 6, 9, 11, right? Yeah, the 11 thing ought to be 12 there. For, make up one. Have 12. Everything comes in 12s. But, but there, there's 11 items up there that I think when you're finished today and finished with a course, this, will, this, makes, this is your final exam, really. Because when you get to finish, you're going to say to yourself, aha. If I just go home and write, I am physically fit, I am physically fit, and then write some goals how I'm going to do that, and, and then decide what that means to get to be a peak performance physically, then you'll have written one of your values for your constitution. And each of those 11 could have a paragraph written about them, which would basically be your constitution. At least that's 11 of my areas. You may want to change them for you. So let's just spend a few minutes talking about them and having you uh, share some things about them. Let, let's, let's, kinda, let's go to time management. We had a whole hour on it. Hope you got a paragraph written in your, your constitution about I, I'm control of my life. Wouldn't that be your paragraph? I'm in control of my life and you've outlined what's, what you're going to do and how the triquasion works and how you make a plan and prioritize the whole bit. We had a whole, a whole seminar on that by itself, so we won't spend any time on that. Financial fitness. Don't miss the class. I don't, it won't be next week, but in a few weeks, you're going to have a whole section we're going to have on I am financially independent. And we'll talk about the richest man, man in Babylon and George Clayson's ideas and those basic themes of how to do it. And I'll give you a program how you take charge of your life financially. If you want to retire young, a peak performer, if you want to be a peak performer, you've got to plan for it. You've got to understand the rules of the game. And we'll have a whole session to talk about that. So one of your... One of your values is probably going to be, I am financially independent. Then you're going to write it up and we'll have a class period we talk about it. Three, skills and talents. Uh, now, let me stop a minute. I, I, I'm going to try to convince you today that these 11 are just 11, but they could be 11 of 21 or 11 of 15 or, or 11 of whatever. And each area, if you really want to get prepared to someday stand in front of your Heavenly Father or be like Him, you need to identify the areas of your life that you want to become a peak performer in. And then you need to say, okay, what do I need to do to get there? As what the Constitution is all about. I think that your skills and talents are a necessary area. You need to be developing them. Where, do you, where are you spending a lot of time, my friends, in trying to develop and get your, your talents and your skills into a peak performance mode? Where would you be doing that? All of you right now, all together. You're right here, aren't you? You're right here. Those of you have, some of you are really focused in a, in a computer science area. Some of you are focused in other areas. Some of you are living with the dream of being the number one basketball team in the, in the nation and getting an NBA deal, whatever, buying Fiji, whatever you want to do with it. But, but the bottom line is, is, is that you are here at this university to find and identify your oil, aren't you? You're trying to find out where you have talents and skills that you can develop that you can make yourself into a home run person that you can perform at your peak when the time comes. When the opportunity for employment comes, if you really take advantage of your education, you will have yourself prepared for a vocation where you're going to, and we're going to talk about this another week when we talk about uh, 
good to great, we'll still talk about how you've got to merge all the thoughts together, become the best in the world at something. And, and this is what you're here trying to find. What is it that you have the ability to become a peak performer in in some area of life? If you don't ever find that, life then will be, you'll be forced into a pattern of mediocrity. You'll be stuck in a, in a rut, in, a, in an average performance state where you'll be working in the warehouse the rest of your life or working for somebody else the rest of your life, and, and that's okay if that's what you want to do, but most of you don't want to do that. Most of you aren't coming to a university environment to find yourself working in a warehouse. You come here to say, how can I become somebody? How can I find my skills, develop my skills, hone my skills, and move my performance ability up to here so that when the day comes, I can compete on the open market with my skill set? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, Brother Richie. <laughs> okay. Any question? You okay? Anybody mad? Okay, let's come around a minute. Nutrition and rest. How many, how many missed breakfast today? How many did not eat breakfast this morning? You know, and if you're honest, probably half of you, right? Why do you do that? You, 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 what do you know about breakfast? Most, how many times your mother told you that? And your, and your nutrition teacher and everybody else. Everybody in the world you know that has any sense about nutrition tells you that you need to have a great breakfast. When should your lightest meal be of the day? Dinner time. When do we eat the biggest meal? Dinner. Why do we do that? <laughs> We're American, okay? <laughs> We're stupid. <laughs> okay. Whatever. We, we do that. We do it backwards all the time. And yet, and yet if, you know, how important is nutrition? How important is it being nutritionally sound to you as a student, as an employee, as a parent? I mean, what, what happens if you don't take care of the way you eat and the way you sleep? What will eventually be the outcome of that? It's obvious, isn't it? The outcome eventually is that you'll break down, your immune system gets worse, you, you get sickly more often, you get colds, you get fevers, you get down and out, you have problems. Why? Because your body isn't prepared for what it needs to have to sustain life. And, and then especially, you come, you come to university running in here to take an exam, an 8 o'clock exam, and, and you haven't eaten anything for 12 hours, half of you. So the, your, your blood sugar to the brain, now everything the brain needs to be energized and w working in life shuts down on you, half-mast. You're not trying to do the best in a, in a math exam. Something wrong with that. That's sign language. <laughs> That's the only one I know. Something, something wrong with that, okay? Something wrong with that if you can't learn how to become wise in the way you eat. And, and, the way, and then what about rest? You know, we, we, what's the formula, the secret formula from David Haight and J. Paul Getty? What is it? What is it to start off with? Get, get up early. Work hard. Get your education so you can find your oil so you can make your mark so you can be of service. The first one is what? Get up early. You know why you don't get up early? You dough heads. Because <laughs> why? Because you go to bed so late. And so, and so you still try and run on four hours sleep because you go to bed at two o'clock and then you can't get up at six anymore and so you sleep in until seven or miss class, whatever you got to do or come to class late and you sleep through first period class. You just, get, you just dope around all day long. Why? Because you, you had this little bit of sleep and you say to yourself, what am I doing so poor in school? You know, I, I ate three days ago and I slept a week ago. You know, how come I flunk at all my exams, you know? <laughs> I mean, the mind just shuts down on you. The body shuts down. It can't operate. You're always getting colds. You're always getting the flu, whatever. Because this, this body doesn't work unless... And so they discovered, and they spent a lot of time in Jacksonville saying, we've got to teach people how to eat. And how do they need, they've got to have seven hours of sleep a night. Some need a little bit more even. But six and a half to eight hours sleep is what everybody usually needs to make it work on long term. And so they work on how to get yourself up to a peak performance by learning how to eat right and how to sleep. Okay? 
Enough said. And he, but you ought to have one of your one of your guidelines. One of your principles ought to be, I I am I know how to eat. I am a great nutritionist. Whatever. Okay. Going around physically tough. Here's where I specialize in. It's one of my great areas. Why would you laugh at that, Devin? Tell him. See? <laughs> Just walking by. <laughs> but, but me and Betty ride the bike every morning, don't we? Yeah. Me and Betty are out on the bike whistling a tune every morning for five to ten miles, and then we stop in and weigh ourselves at the gym and push a few weights once in a while. But you know what? I found that if I'll do that five to ten mile bike ride every day and just push a few weights, I, I, you know, I, I don't look like, I don't look like Rambo, okay? I really don't look like Rambo. I don't, I'm not built like Rambo. I'm not, I know I'm smarter than Rambo, but I don't look like him. Yeah, that's, cool. that's probably not even true. But, but I, but I, but I never get sick either. I, you know, I had polio when I was a year old, but I've hardly ever, I, I don't even have a cold anymore. I, I just never had them. I, I don't know whether that's just positive attitude or what. And, and I and I just thank my stars every day for the fact that I <laughs> I don't have that happen. But you know, but but I I have found in my life that I need to be have some physical activity. And at my age, I really ought to be doing even more. But but I if I but everybody needs to do that. This this where these guys started. They began by saying you got to be if you're if you're an athlete for the way they started. You got to be physically at your very 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 best. That's where you got to shine. You just got to be there. You, your competition's getting there, and you got to be there too. Well, that, guess what, you know, folks? It works for all of us, doesn't it? We all need to learn how to eat, how to sleep, and how to how to work the muscle. Which muscles? Which muscles really need worked every day? What 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 system really needs to have work on every day? Cardio. Your 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 cardio is one of those, isn't it? You just got to get your cardio system operating. That it is because it's going to. It's got to last. It, when it quits, it's all over, isn't it? You got to get. What else you, you got to work on? You know, this this gut section is one you can work on. They say, tell me every day. You know, I don't do it well every day, but you can. You can work on this this area right here needs work on, especially the older you get, and, and the more you want to eat wrong or whatever, you just add weight here, and it, and you know we envy you sometimes. <laughs> You know, but this is where these these kind of muscle systems, the heart and the gut, are two areas of the life you really need to work on. Because as age creeps up on you, you need to be working at a better performance state. Okay, but often we don't do that. We we eat wrong and then we exercise wrong, and we aren't prepared when that physical moment comes. Okay. So I'll see you at the gym. Okay. All right. What's next? Anybody got a great joke you want to share? Just a short, great joke? Knock, knock. Pardon? Say knock, knock. Knock, knock. Who's there? Who's there? Oh, <laughs> that's good. good. Let's try it again now, but now this time, everybody laugh. Knock, knock. <laughs> uh, uh, Amos. No, yeah, Amos. A mosquito. A mosquito. Knock, knock. Anna, another mosquito. Knock, knock. <laughs> Consumption. Consumption be done about all the mosquitoes. <laughs> okay, now, but some of you got a better one than that. You were going to raise your hand. You couldn't beat that one, could you? Okay. You still didn't give me a knock, knock. So, okay, but my, my point is, anybody got a real funny, you know, did you, did you also heard, you did hear that Obama won the Heisman Trophy, didn't you? Didn't you know that? The Heisman. He did. No, he won the Heisman too. He 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 attended a game the other day. <laughs> you got to laugh, okay? You got to laugh. I got to not. But you know, the bottom line is, why is humor so important to the physical body? Is it important? How important? What, what, what happens when people can't laugh at themselves? What happens when people don't ever have anything enjoyed where they... Laughing is the most physically 
releasing recovery stage of the whole cycle of life. People need to learn how to laugh. They need to how to have fun. They need to how to and you know the different. But what you got to watch out. What do you have to watch out for when you when you're causing causing humor? Which I just did a minute ago. Wrong. You should not what? You should not make jokes at somebody else's expense. Now, even though we do with political figures, I was out of order doing that with my Obama joke, okay? He didn't get the Heisman. He didn't get it, okay? okay? He did not get it. I just want to announce in advance he did not get the Heisman, see? okay? But, but my point is, if we're going to make funnies about somebody, it better be funnies about you only, or something that's neuter gender, right, that has nobody attached to it. But we need to learn to laugh. We need to laugh at ourselves. Okay? Very important. I am a, I am a humorous person. I am, you need to put something in your constitution and learn to. And if you don't do it, you need to put it in and do it often. Leadership. What would be your paragraph in your constitution about this one? I am a great leader. Okay? We'll have a whole class on that sometime, so I won't spend a lot of time on that. But I want to, I want to, because we're going to have a whole class on it. This is one of my favorite areas. That's what this class is all about, and we'll 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 talk more about it when we get there. Maybe we'll come back to it in a minute. Okay, creativity. How many in this room think you're creative? Okay, some of you do. Some of you recognize that. I guess what, my friend? I think all of you are. I think all of us are. We just often don't realize it. My wife is a very creative person in the way that I think a creative person. She can draw and cut and comb and make dresses and do all kinds of things, and, and, it, and I can't do that. I, I got my only D in my life came from an art class uh, in seventh grade, and I never picked up the <laughs> artist thing. I'll do one more art for you before the semester's over, but I'm a, l a lousy artist, but I don't need to be such a lousy artist, but it's not a peak area of mine. But, it's, but I think we sometimes sell ourselves short. I want to show you, I want to show you a little slide here, a little, a little YouTube. Uh, no, no, it's not a YouTube. I want to show you a, uh, I want to show you one of my favorite musical, okay? It's my favorite musical. It's just a five-minute little blurb. To get the lights turned a little bit lower for them and turn this on. And I want to see why I tie this to creativity, okay?